Hello and welcome. Welcome to Conscious Woman Rising, remembering the sound of the embodied feminine. I'm Deepika Delmenico and I'm the founder and host of Conscious Woman Rising. And today I am so absolutely delighted to be in conversation with the divine Deva Pramal. Featured in top media, including the Wall Street Journal, the Los Angeles Times and the Huffington Post, endorsed by celebrities as varied as Sher, Tony Robbins and the Dalai Lama, included in movie soundtracks and honoured by 1.5 million album sales, 550,000 monthly Spotify listeners and 400,000 Facebook followers, groundbreaking musicians, Deva Pramal and Mitten are modern nomads, I love that, modern nomads on a mission to share with humanity the medicine of mantra with original chants that are used for meditation, yoga, stress management, massage and conscious sleep playlists worldwide, Deva Pramal and Mitten not only model spirituality or spiritually conscious living, but also share powerful tools, powerful tools for wellness, mindfulness and personal growth. Deva is living the sound of the embodied feminine and her service is uplifting the consciousness of humanity in potent, penetrating ways across the globe as hundreds of thousands of people experience the power of self-love. And working with mantra as medicine is particularly dear to me in my work and has been for decades as an Ayurvedic practitioner and a teacher of mantra therapeutically clinically and in, in my work with Nadi Yoga. So it's so wonderful. I'm so excited to be diving in and exploring our topic today. So David, thank you. Thank you for joining us and for being a part of this really important and timely conversation around consciousness of women and, and how we're expanding and cultivating the very sound of remembering our embodied feminine nature. Thank you, Deepika. That sounds beautiful. I wonder if we should start with a disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> Two things. I, uh, you most probably know more than me with Nada Yoga. You know, I, 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 uh, I'm really a very innocent, uh, childlike. Um, in an exploration of mantra that's very unscientific. So, you know, I, of course, I've, I have an experience and I know the depth, but I don't, I don't think I know as much as you. So you, you'll help me when I... When the, and uh, and we'll the other... Huh? We will collaborate together. <laughs> and the other thing is that I was... Uh, that's why I was also hesitant to say yes to, to be part of this because I, I just never ever really think of oh, feminine or women or men or, you know, I never, it, I just never, I'm never drawn to it. I'm never, I never go to women's groups or I never read, like we, for example, we are on a, on the tour with often, I'm, now we have a lot of women in the crew, but we, once you know, I was the only one in 10 men or something, I didn't even notice, you know, like it's just, oh. It doesn't, it, I never really think about it. So I was wondering if I'm really like the right person here. But anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll just contribute what, what is. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you for your authenticity and your disclaimer, your <laughs> authentic disclaimer. Firstly, um, I'd, I'd just like to speak to that before we start by saying, you know, it, it's, it's so perfect. It makes you so perfect because... It's experiential. We can understand anything in theory and conceptually. What makes your work so influential and so accessible and real to people and what people love is 
it is experiential. Mm. And so one can drop out of the head and have a living experience of it in the heart. And that's what it's all about. Mm. So that, that's just a, a beautiful thing that you make this accessible to people that they're drawn to you and to what you're doing without even necessarily understanding what it is they're doing, but they're having this loving experience of the heart and which is then experiencing the very qualities of the sound, of the mantra mm -hmm. in itself, these sacred, sacred sounds. So it's, it's just beautiful. And as far as the, the great feminine goes, it's inherent in all of us. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the great feminine, the sacred feminine in all living beings that is at the essence of this work. It's really Conscious Woman Rising is really calling on women to wake up to that aspect of themselves as the carriers of the infinite potential to create life itself. Mm. And so it really, Mother Earth, Mother Nature begins with that creative force which is possessed in womanhood herself. Mm. And so I think it's wonderful that um, good on you for being with obviously clearly good men that are in touch with that aspect of themselves to tour with 10 men all that time and not even be consciously aware of the fact, hey, I'm the only woman here. That's true they are, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And... Uh, but really, it's, it's not about being feminist. It's not about women being any more or any less. It, it's about women acknowledging and remembering and renaturing with that divine aspect of themselves because I believe that the entire planet needs this at this time. Mm. because it does start with women and all our beautiful, dear, good men need that. Mm. We all need it. Mm. The earth needs it. Mm. Yeah. So I'd like to, Deva, ask then, what does the, what does the medicine of mantra and meditation mean to you? Mm. Just, I just want to also um, bring in Meten because usually I, I do every, we do everything together. We've been um, almost yes. 28 years together or whatever. And we are really like this, all this unfolding has been a joint uh, venture. And uh, so here I am today without Meten, but he's really in my heart and he's here. So <laughs> just uh, invoking his presence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, And... Yeah, the medicine of mantra is, it's universal and it's, um, I, I just love it's, that, it, that it exists. <laughs> I love that, it, that we all have access to it and that we all can experience it, no matter how good of a singer we are or musician or no matter if we know anything about mantra or or Sanskrit, or if we have any connection to India, or really all we need is a breath in our bodies and, and of course the adventurous spirit to, to explore what sound does to our beings and our souls and our inner space. And if we want to start exploring that, then you know we could start with a sound of Om, which I think almost everyone in the world has heard the sound om i don't i can't imagine i don't know maybe not but actually there is somebody who didn't know it before and um which is a good story because this is the story of um uh, a man called evan alexander dr evan alexander who wrote this book proof of heaven and he was a neurosurgeon who didn't believe in any anything after death in any soul any spirit it's just the physical and when we had the when we are dead, we are dead. And, but he had this near-death experience and he um, visited all these different levels of consciousness 
of evolution maybe i don't know we just he didn't know what it was but it seemed like that and the highest highest was the sound of om and um he said that he he thought he'd kind of discovered om because he'd never heard of it before and he thought he was going to come back and tell the world about om and uh and you know so so that's that's the 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 extent and the the holiness and the omnipresence om is omni is om is an omni omnipresence of om and it's the sound you know there's so many different ways to to translate it but maybe the sound of the universe or the cosmic yes the sound of one hand clapping it's the sound of the the third eye chakra where the masculine and feminine energy meet so it's it's universal and it's also beyond concepts you know there's no deity attached to it no form attached to it we don't have to get used to any kind of concept around it it's just the sound and so that's a really great sound to have always available to us you know and in, in times of stress we can have the om on our out breath we can have it when we fall asleep it can be the every out breath can be om till we fall asleep so then it can can go on all night through sleep it can just keep going and be there when we wake up it's it's uh it's just a matter of remembering and reminding ourselves or each other which is sometimes really good to 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 invite it and to have, to make a little space for it because it just needs a little space in the beginning you know it just needs just the the remembrance and then you do it three times when you wake up in the morning or we do it one time before eating you know one breath of om out breath of om and that's a really great way to enter sound enter our our connection with our own voice and mantra and meditation and it's good for beginners it's good for people who have been meditating forever you know it's 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 um universal really yeah I love that. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that story too. And you said that Om is like the cosmic yes. Mm -hmm. I love that image, a cosmic yes, because mm -hmm. yes, it is. <laughs> and it, it's, it's the complete creation and dissolution all contained within this one sound. And and I love the way that you just described it. it. It makes it so accessible and doable. Just as we breathe, we can bring on into our daily life. Mm. And we just have to create the little space for it, you said. Mm. And that's, that's a, it's a beautiful visual. It's a beautiful image because we're seeking especially in the, the contemporary world that we live in that is so busy, there is such a, a yearning constantly for more space, for more inner spaciousness, for more space in our lives. And to be able to experience that by moments of pausing and bringing this divine primordial sound into our day, we can have an experience. We're cultivating an experience of that inner spaciousness. Mm. that's wonderful that's wonderful and I love that there was somebody that you encountered that had never heard of this sound but had their own full complete experience mm. of it I mean, a kind of threshold experience but a really powerful life-changing experience that this sound is real the qualities of this sound exist everywhere Mm. that's powerful mm. wow and Deva how then to you do you experience and feel the sounds of mantra as being therapeutic totally therapeutic I mean because first of all because we when we actually chant out loud we use our voice so that in itself is already very very healing and and charges our cells and and brings us into a space of energizing our body through the sound 
And that's just just by singing anyway, that happens when we sing. And then when we sing mantra, we also get into a very specific rhythm of singing because the mantra repeats and brings us into into like a pranayama, into a into breathing technique that we are not even conscious of, but it will do that just automatically in itself. And uh, and then of course the sounds are um, they are in Sanskrit language, which is the ancient Indian language, and that's an energetically based language, which means that all the sounds are direct experiences of the experience. You know, like there is no, they are not, they are not a pointer. They are, they are. This is it. This is the sound of that manifestation, and. So how more direct can we experience love than singing prema or prema, which is love? Mm. And that's beautiful because we have no, no concepts around prema. You know, like when, when I say prema, I don't think of heartbreak and of, of, you know, being disappointed or being, you know, romantically in love or whatever, we, whatever comes when we hear the sound love, when we hear the word love. You know, everybody has different associations and feelings, and but prem is un, because we don't speak it, we have no no history with it, and so it's very direct. And then to tune ourselves into that sound, for example, aham prema, which means I am love, and then to have that as a mantra every day, you know, 108 times. You know, that's the next step where we actually focus on uh, on. A certain number of cycles so that we really drench our whole system in that mantra and fill our nadis like in, like in the nada yoga mm -hmm. fill our nadis with that uh, mantra and 108 is the auspicious number to do that and that's really a way to really dive in and see how the mantra affects our lives or our thoughts our being our inner peace mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's again, it's universal because, you know, we travel so much. I think we recently we counted, we've played in 43 countries or something. And, you know, everybody relates to the mantras and they, they you know, we, we went to Siberia and they sang the Gayatri mantra to us, you know, like because they had already, it had already traveled there and, and it's somehow people had memorized it. And, and uh, it's... It's amazing how we all relate to it, although it's so not our language for most of us, you know. And me too, I, it's not my language either. I don't speak Sanskrit or I can't understand it. So I also just learn the sounds, but I have a f really easy way. I don't know, it just comes easy and, and to, to, to make those sounds and to remember them. Mm. But it, I, I, I feel that this is true for many people. Mm, absolutely. And, and you're right, whilst it may not be the, our native language in this human body, it is everybody's native language because it is the language of the gods. It is the language of love. Like it's, it's a sound composed of quality. Mm. It's all the qualities, my understanding, it's all the qualities of the universe. Mm. So it's a universal language that is inherently familiar to everybody. Mm. And and I loved as you repeated the mantra aham prema. Then I could just feel that quality. Could you know feel it was so alive in you? It's just beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So I, I love to be in this conversation, and it's it's wonderful to hear you speak in this way and to be able to discuss it because I believe that you know mantra that this. The language of sound, the medicine of sound, is the original medicine. Mm. It's the medicine now, at this moment, and it's the ultimate medicine where we're heading to as well. Mm. Is this very healing gesture of sound will be embraced more and more and more universally. And as you say, it's 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 for everybody. It's non-denominational. It's for all beings, no matter where we're placed on this planet, what our religion or spiritual orientation, because it's qualitative. Mm. Um, and so it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And yeah. 
that's extraordinary. It must have been, I can't even imagine how it must have felt. Well, I can only imagine how it felt when you went to Siberia. I mean, yeah. And people are chanting the guy out to you. Like, wow. <laughs> that's, you know, that's brotherhood and sisterhood, isn't it? Mm. We are all the same. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we're all love. And also the way you described Prem and mm. love and as the experience of the substance of love as opposed to love being associated with pain or heartbreak or being mm. associated with a memory or an experience. Mm. You, you described beautifully the, the essence of love. And, uh, and that when we, I'm, I'm going to practice it, <laughs> the mantra that you share <laughs> and have an experience of it. Yeah. So what then does the embodied feminine sound like to you? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's the difference between, I don't know. Um, I think it's just, you know, human beings being, um, being comfortable in their own skin, being at home in themselves and, and coming from that space. And it doesn't matter if feminine or mas masculine, it's going to feel just like a sound of, acceptance and love and and that's going to come out of that particular human being you know exactly and i think that you have i think you've got it <laughs> <laughs> and i love that you say no idea it's you don't need to have an idea you you've got it <laughs> that's it that's exactly it it's um It's acceptance, isn't it? It's acceptance of ourselves and loving our nature as it is. The divine aspect of our nature. It's not really falsely identifying with any part of ourselves. Yeah, it's really that comf comfortable feeling that we, that we have when we close our eyes. You know, mm -hmm. that we are happy in there. You know, that we are okay in there when we are alone within ourselves and uh, and that's yeah that we are just resting in which we can rest in that and from there we live yeah that's beautiful it's just got such a, a quality of warmth to mm. it mm. and softness it's not forced mm. it's very natural nurturing warmth because it's not everybody's experience that they feel that when they close their eyes. And no, that's, that's not necessarily really, something that comes yeah. easily. No, yeah, totally. That's where the mantras help us because they that do bring us to a space where it then does feel comfortable. You know, you you chant and then the, it just cleans out our system. Yeah. So profoundly that even just a few minutes of chanting, even three ohms and and. Uh, you feel totally different, you know, than before. It's uh, very, very quick, actually. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I just see it also in our concerts. You know, we have we have so many people coming off the street, you know, so to say, and uh, and we can all drop into that silence so quickly and and be in that comfortable, you know, nobody clapping, just to silence pin drop silence nobody even do, as the evening goes on nobody shuffles or coughs anymore it's just really we are really ready to be to be in there together and that's the the gift of the mantras and the the chanting and the music that that it's a kind of a shortcut to that to that comfortable inner space yeah yeah for sure and mm -hmm. i mean that's so much of that is you it's it's you and mitten like that's your because that's what you're living that is your presence um it's also i i suppose it's that's your intention it's yeah it's the yeah. you invite people in yeah. to, into that space 
and um, but it sounds like you create an environment each time that is really conducive it's supporting for people to be able to effortlessly lean back mm. and drop into the heart drop into that beautiful silent space of love mm. it's so powerful deva like it, it really is powerful this is you know this is rooms full of people at a time, sometimes, you know, hundreds, sometimes even thousands of people in like 43 countries in the world that are having experience firsthand of being instruments of peace mm. too. It's such an uplifting, wonderful contribution. To the world mm. that we need it's so healing it's definitely needed it's definitely needed yeah and read the news it's really like wow yeah yeah so it's um your devotion and your mission uh that they're really i acknowledge and 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 are so am so appreciative of what you do that um that it has such an impact that you're so, so committed to doing this and uh, uh so that others can and then have the experience and then do it in their own lives mm. and and really make a change and obviously you know that's a lot of travel that's a lot of travel that you do and but it must energize you it, it, Lives, it's just, um, it just, just comes naturally, you know. Yeah, yeah. So self care must be an important practice for you and for Mitten. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, we do uh, we do the best we can because it's fun, you know, to to eat well and to move the body as much as possible. You know, of course, there are times like when we're on the road. I don't move the body that much, don't get it together, you know, like so I have phases, you know. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, we, we are, and because also in the, in the world that we live, the people we travel with and the people who organize our concerts, you know, we're all in the same boat, so they make sure that we get nourishing food and, uh, you know, like, um, so it's all, everybody is in the same, has the same spirit and that's, so I actually don't even feel like I'm in the I, I, I'm in a little in this bubble, you know, with me ten especially, and then with a bigger you know group and we travel with ten twelve people or whatever. It's, yes. it's like we're in this little bubble, you know. Yeah, yeah. What a beautiful bubble to be in. <laughs> <laughs> a mantra bubble, <laughs> a mantra sphere. <laughs> so what inspires the originality to your chants? Because, you know, you, a lot of your chants are original. A lot of your music is original and it is so magnetic to people. Yeah, it's, it's a deep respect for the mantras and, and, uh, and really good friends who are beautiful composers like that's me 10 of course and then there we have a few manos who we travel with for the last 15 years he's a nepalese flute mm. maestro bansuri uh, bamboo flute maestro very very beautiful being and he's really written now so many beautiful mantra melodies and it's an art you know because when you when the mantra is is emotionless you know it's not an emotional song you know, so the melody and the music we put to it has to be, has to reflect that. It can't suddenly be, you know, it can't make a pop song out of it or blues or, you know, like it just has to stay in that kind of transparent space. Mm. And not, you, you don't, you can't like pinpoint a genre. Of, although having said that, if you listen to our albums you do feel that is a little bit jazz influenced okay because jazz has in the good way you know of course not in the in i mean not that it could be in a bad way but in the appropriate way 
um, because jazz has uh, very open harmonies and chord structures that allow very big space. You know, it's very, it makes it very multi-layered and multi-dimensional. So we, the, like the right amount of that flavor is just opens up a whole new, you know, dimension. And we have beautiful people we work with, Joby Baker, who's, who's um, traveling with us as a bass player and vocalist and also produced the last few albums. He's very tuned in and, and has, has that respect and, the, and the, the skill, you know, to bring that to the table. And uh, so, yeah, so we, we sometimes we chant the mantras in the traditional way, just with, with the two notes, you know, like very very um, just on the repetition focused mm -hmm. and then and the other thing is the melodies where we use the melodies also to open our hearts for the mantra to sink in because when when we sing beautiful melodies we we are, we are touched and we we are happy and we are we like to sing them we want to sing them more mm. has it opens our hearts for the mantra to enter yes and Hopefully they, they linger in our brains during the day, those melodies, and we sing them just because we remember these beautiful melodies. And that's, if that happens, that's beautiful. Yes, yeah. Well, we're musical beings. Our, our very composition by nature is mm -hmm. patterns, is rhythms. It's, we're musical beings. Mm. <laughs> so music really does touch our soul and mm. open our hearts. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What would you describe then as your legacy? What's that? Legacy. I don't know what it is. To the world. Okay. Um, I mean, I hope, I hope what we do, you know, I always feel that we get a lot of emails and, and, you know, messages on Instagram and Facebook and all that. And they're very, very touching. We've actually opened a map now on our own website where people can um, share their stories with mantra and our music. And, oh, beautiful. and I, I often say to Miten, look, if we had just made the music for this one person, it would have been worth it because we've, received messages like, you know, because of the your music or because of the mantras, it saved my life. I was close to taking my life. I didn't feel any more, any joy, any hope. And some spark has been ignited by through the mantras. And I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to live and I want to, you know, explore this more. And that's, and that's not happened just once. It's happened quite a few times. And I feel that's already enough. Like I, I feel like I can already relax and I can, I can, yeah, if that, that's enough. And, um, and you know, if that's the beautiful thing with recordings that they go out there and do their thing. We don't have to be in everywhere to, to, for them to help and heal and support and uplift. And what I hear is that's what they do. And that's beautiful. Yeah. And uh, now we also have, we go regularly to play in an autistic place in um, upstate New York, very amazing place called the Center for Discovery, um, where, they, where they have beautiful cutting edge technology, how to challenge and, and uh, nurture autistic people. Mm. And we do afternoon concerts there every year now. And it's incredible how they respond and how they actually Kind of don't respond because they don't have the the breakouts or the freakouts or the you know the restlessness or the the crisis that they face. You know they actually come to a, a quiet space and the staff says like wow we just never see them like that. You know we we play over an hour and they said that they would sit there for over an hour like that and just absorb. That's just totally mind-blowing to the staff That's and they, yeah. what a gift so they're yeah. actually comfortable yeah in their they body. don't know what mantras are you know they no, don't have of any, not. any concept no. they don't they don't have any kind of aspiration to be spiritual most probably i don't know i could imagine or maybe 
and it just is a direct experience and that's what I love. Then we see really, you know, like there's no, there's not even a placebo effect, you know, because they have, they just come because they are, that's what they, where they're supposed to be for that afternoon. And, and they do many concerts and it's not the same in every concert. So it's not like that it's music. It is really very specific to the mantras and that's so beautiful. I mean, that's, that's just, yeah. It is. It's so beautiful. And this is exactly where I I do believe, I know with my entire being that, you know, the qualities of these sounds, the therapeutic quality of mantra is the healing gesture. And it has been since time immemorial, but more and more so this will be what we come to embrace and experience for our healing as we evolve. Mm. because, you know, as you've just clearly demonstrated, um, people with autism in particular, where people are just struggling to be in their body on this earth, in this life so greatly, and and where they find it difficult to be able to communicate and verbalise in a way that we can understand, they're directly communicative with the quality of sounds with the resonance of the sounds of the mantra. And it's just so healing. The tones, the, the vibrations of them are so healing. Beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Good on you. Thank you for all that you do. <laughs> I mean, that's for us. That's a gift, you know. We feel we receive, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, I was just thinking... Um, totally change of subject but um we do um a program twice a year that we call tantra mantra and it's a program that is for uh heterosexual couples because it's really about the um the balance between female and male energy in in a heterosexual couple yeah um and there's no it it's 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 nothing against same-sex couples. It's just that this is what we work with in that group. You know, we it, it the whole thing is about how do we how do we uh, feel comfortable in our feminineness and how do the men feel comfortable in their masculineness of heterosexual people, and it's uh, it's really very 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 beautiful to see to watch people go through that process and come to a relaxed feeling of being in their own skin and and especially in this now in this world where often women be, do become more male because of you know being in jobs and all that and and in our world in our spiritual world men can tend to become too feminine and yes. too because wanting to be sensitive and you know or being sensitive but then losing maybe that grounding in the masculine you know really beautiful strong rooted mus- masculine and uh, when we use of course also mantra so it's called tantra mantra we do it together with a, a tantra leader called um, Rafia and it was actually his his uh, you wanted to do it for heterosexual couples because that's his experience that's what he knows how to work with yeah. and uh, for us it's nice because it's the only group where we have mixed men and women like 50 yes. yes. because it's always more women everywhere yes. Yes. i have a lot of male voices there and uh, so just yeah i just wanted to throw that into the pot here and uh, i'm glad that you have i'm glad that you have because that's really that encompasses everything that the whole theme of this this summit is all about mm. it, it's about becoming embodied embracing without being present, cultivating love and presence without any, and in a real tantric way, you know, without the preference mm. for one or the other, without preference of, you know, fullness or yearning to just embrace and remember our nature as we are. And, and then being able to have a more fulfilling relationship with ourself 
and with another, mm. with our partner. So, mm. yeah. David, thank you so much for sharing with us, for being part of, of this summit. I am so deeply moved and, and grateful to you. Thank you. Thank you, Deepika. Beautiful to connect with you. Yeah. We you now be meet somewhere down the road and I hope so. Absolutely. Yeah. And who knows, it may even be on Australian soil, which would be great. <laughs> More likely. <laughs> I'll have to get up your way to the Northern Rivers come next February or to Melbourne. Yeah. 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 Wow. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste. Have a beautiful day. You too. Mm.